Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this film I'd like to show you a little bit more about uh, sketch blocks and probably it's something that's a little bit more complicated. We're going to be doing with my sketch blocks in this one as uh, opposed to the previous ones where we created a very simple block and use that as a window cutout for my coach, my uh, rail car here. What we're going to be doing is we're going to use something that's got a, a little bit more complex geometry to show you some of the pitfalls associated with this because sometimes the geometry gets in a way but it isn't really apparent uh, when you create your blocks and insert the blocks and put constraints on it like what's going on here I don't really quite understand it and I'm going to hopefully try to uh, maybe explain how blocks work and uh, how they work within the sketch environment and uh, avoid some of the pitfalls because uh, one thing that could very uh, easily happen is your sketch will become overdefined then you have to try to fix that but worst case scenario is it becomes insolvable and overdefined and then Sometimes SolidWorks will stop working on you, as it did twice earlier this morning to me. And uh, as you're trying to work through these uh, problems, you can probably avoid something like that. Because sometimes you get busy working, you don't uh, save your files often enough, and uh, you lose some work. And uh, you don't want to do that, and you certainly don't want uh, SolidWorks to crash in you. Because sometimes, yeah, you know, obviously you have to start it over. But sometimes you have to clear out your cache and uh, start your computer over, too. So it's a big waste of time. This will help you uh, resolve that a lot of bit. So we uh, actually used our, uh, for putting in the windows, it's our, my cut extrude down here, cut extrude 17. I would probably call that window 2 if I wanted to. But what I like to concentrate more on is this New York, Centri as New York Central lettering on the left side of the car. And what it is, I uh, base it on this Henry Dreyfus drawing of uh, that complete train set of the Mercury train, uh, which ran between Cleveland and Detroit in the mid-1930s. Uh, he designed this whole uh, train uh, you know, for the New York Central system, including some of the lettering. So I used this geometry here for the lettering off of this drawing. And if you if whoop, if we look at that really close, let me put that back in place here. If you look at this uh, close enough, uh, we can see some of the constraints here. And what I did is I created some uh, sketch geometry in order to constrain some of the lettering that's going to be associated with our drawing and our ultimate model. So. If you look at it, the lettering is consistently five inches tall. And uh, all the lettering is confined within a, a width of 20 feet 5 and 5 eighths of an inch. So what it is, it created a, using a center lines or construction lines, I created a rectangle that's 20 feet 5 and 5 eighths of an inch by 5 inches tall. You also notice that that rectangle is going to be centered about this window. This window is not necessarily centered in the car, but it is the central window within that bank of windows. So I created some geometry in here, I put in the center line down the middle, and I made this rectangle with a diagonal line from that corner down here to this corner. I made that uh, rectangle centered between this line, which denotes uh, the top of this flat face here before it rolls into the, the, you know, the, the rolling portion of the roof, and the very top of the windows, because there is a, a, a notation in here that talks about equal spacing between the letters. So, with that said, what I try to do with this is create some reference geometry here, and just as I described, we have a line down here in the middle. Uh, this line over here, this uh, center line, is going to be centered between this line here and that line here, which denotes where the roof begins to go through its curvature. And then we have our 20 foot 5 and uh, 5 eighths of an inch rectangle by 5 inches on this side. So I think my dimensions on that side, but it is 5 inches by the 20 and uh, 20 feet and uh, 5 and uh, 5 eighths of an inch wide. So within that, I try to create my spacing for each one of the letters. We have 7 inches here for the N, 8 inches for the space between the N and an E, E over here at 7, 6 and uh, 3 quarters, and so on and so forth. Once I did that, I started creating my letters. Once I got my letters created, I began to create blocks, and I'll demonstrate that here in just a few minutes. But before we get into that and into subsequent films, let me show you one more thing about inserting a block and some of the edits you can uh, use associated with those blocks. When you put in a block or create a block, uh, SolidWorks will initially uh, define an arbitrary point for... Uh, for your insertion point, it may not be the point that you really want. And once you get that created, you can go ahead and back into that block, edit that block, and recreate or redefine that uh, insertion point. And when I say that the insertion point is going to be put in there arbitrarily, it's usually done within the confines of the geometry of your block that you create. Unlike AutoCAD, where really it truly is arbitrary, you can put it many miles away from where your object is, from where your uh, sketch lines are. 
uh, ge uh, SOLIDWORKS will actually put it on uh, part of your geometry. So, to, just to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and insert a block and show you what I mean. I'm going to put an N in here. And the way I've been doing this is I put in uh, some, uh, some center lines or construction lines uh, between uh, the top line up here. And what it is, I cre try to create a box where these uh, lines are going to go. And so I'm going to fully define this, just like I've done before. And that line got in a little bit too quick for me, but you want to make sure that's confined on the top and the bottom. We're going to put a dimension from one side to the other. So we'll make that maybe 7 inches. And sometimes it doesn't like that. And this is part of the problems with creating blocks in here. Uh, and putting in some additional geometry in here is it sometimes just it doesn't like it. There is some geometry that's associated and some constraints are associated with the blocks in there that until you take out that geometry, and I'll show you how to do that here in a couple of films subsequent to this, uh, you may have a difficulty doing it. So let's just say we have this uh, put in here and let me go ahead and show you how to put in that R and change that insertion point. And then in subsequent films, we will show you how to uh, actually create blocks in here and some of the problems and pitfalls associated with overdefining the sketch when you do that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and insert that uh, block. We have a number of different blocks that are already created. We're going to pick the R block, and we're going to put it in here. So our R block is already defined with an insertion point in uh, that lower left-hand corner, and that's okay. If we were to drag that down here, we can make an association with that point down here do escape a couple times and now our R is in place. It may not be exactly where we want it and our R is free to rotate. The only thing we did is we confined it to that point. So if we want to do some additional uh, uh, constraints in here, we can grab the bottom of that uh, leg of the R in that line and make that collinear with each other and then eventually put in uh, some uh, other constraints in here that will help define that a little bit better. If you want to change the insertion point to a different location, this is how you would do it. So let's take the W for instance, and we want to change that. So if we go to insertion point on that, you'll notice it's over here, over here in the lower left hand corner just as it is in the R. All you have to do is click on this, which brings up the, the properties manager. Click on the insertion point of the triad associated with that insertion point and just move it to a different location. It'll make a, it'll make a, um, a relationship with the corner down there. Just drop it into place, go to the green check mark. And now when we were to insert uh, the W as a, as a block, and right now the block is called block 7, and we didn't really rename it, but now it's in a different location. We'll bring that down to that line. You can see how that works. So again, if you remember how to do that, if you want to rename that block, which is now block 7, if you just solely click on it, we'll call that just a capital W. And remember the second uh, element in there, which is a, a number, a dash, a number. That's our first instance of the W with a second instance of the W over there. So I think that's enough for this film. And the next film will show you how to create a block within the confines of the geometry that you have here. We'll also try to clean this up a little bit with some of the blocks we've already created. And show you how to get rid of some of those uh, multiple uh, constraints in here, which are causing this whole sketch to go over defined.